today's Bible passage is Acts 18, verses 12 through 17. As Paul arrived in Corinth, he made friends with Aquila and Priscilla and joined with them in the profession of tent making. He spoke in the synagogue on the Sabbath and shared his testimony in the gospel message of Christ Jesus. But in Acts 18, 12, we're informed that the Jews in Corinth were strongly opposed to the message that Paul was preaching and they joined together and brought him before the proconsul with the charge that he was teaching a message contrary to the law God gave to Moses. The proconsul, Galileo, was to enforce Roman law and was not concerned with the laws of the Jews or the law of the Old Testament. As he informed them to look to themselves in such matters, in Acts 18, verses 14 through 16. In this, an uproar ensued in the crowd. Some manuscripts say Greeks, but others say they all. And the clarity of the crowd is somewhat uncertain, as the beating of Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, takes place. In one instance, this could mean the Greeks in their, opposi in their opposition to the Jews and in another possibility is that the Jews in the crowd took place in this beating in their fury of the proconsul dismissing the charges against Paul and so placed the blame on Sosthenes. Lastly, we're informed that Galileo, the proconsul, took no notice of these things in Acts 18, 17, b, which could be a clue to the public disapproval of the Jews by the Roman citizens. This is an example of the opposition and struggle in which we all will face in this earthly life. This is an example of the need for the guidance of the Lord in our lives each day. I must believe that the beating of Sosthenes, the ruler of synagogue, is a result of misdirected and furious crowd in placing the blame and responsibility for an undesired judgment. It would seem that they would have taken their anger out on Paul and made him the focus of their beating, but he's lost in the crowd and freed from any wrongdoing. Such is the hostility of the secular community today. Right, wrong, or indifferent, blame is insisted on being placed on someone, even if the one on whom the blame is placed is innocent. The fury of the sinful nature that Satan controls this world with is amazingly out of control and can only be harnessed by way of realizing our need for the love of Christ Jesus and the forgiveness that only he can provide. Satan is only in control of those who allow it to be so and the chains that, and the chains that Satan holds people in and wants us to believe are unbreakable have already been broken by Jesus when he died for our sins on the cross. And then on that glorious third day, he rose from the grave, victorious over sin, death, and Satan. John 14, 6, in the New King James Version, tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through him. He was sent by our Heavenly Father for this very reason, to conquer sin, death, and Satan once for all as we learn from Romans 6, verses 9 and 10, that if one should confess with his or her mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in his or her heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, they will be saved. The complications of this sinful world are many, and they lead to eternal death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord as we are told in Romans 6.23 by the Apostle Paul. As God calls us all to him to redeem us back to a right relationship with himself through his one and only son Jesus, the choice is ours to make. I encourage you to make the choice for Jesus and submit your will to seeking his will for your life, for it is the most important decision you will ever make. Dear Lord, we cannot overcome the wicked ways of the sinful nature on our own. We need your help. 
We need the saving grace of Jesus to intervene in our lives and set us free from the sinful nature that Satan has us bound in. Please speak to our hearts that we would open them to Jesus and seek true forgiveness from the only one who can set us free from the grasp of Satan, that we would put on a new life in Christ Jesus and begin seeking your will for our lives as you have a purpose for us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.